Do you like seeing shiny brand new things crash in explosions? Well, today might be a good day for you then, which would be a very bad day for me. This is the new Blade Eclipse 360, and it's a very cool, unique, different looking helicopter. Now, I don't think they're the first in the world to do this, but I do believe this is the first time Blade has ever used foam, EPO foam, as their body on their helicopter. It's gonna be easy to work on and that kind of thing, which is great, and let's not deny the fact that it looks really cool. I think that a lot of people are gonna like the way this looks. Now, your Blade stunt helicopter pilots may not because it's less traditional, and people tend to like traditional things sometimes, and that's okay too. We have a brushless main rotor. This does fly on 3S power, so I don't think it's like an extreme performance helicopter, but more of a scale flyer with some 3D capabilities, and we have a brushless tail rotor. I love the way the tail setup looks, I really do. I like the multi-blade fan. What do we have there, five blades, Abby? Mm -hmm. It looks good. We've got lights all over the helicopter up here on the tail. We've got some nav lights down here, and optional wheels for landing gear if you so choose. It comes with the skids on, but you can pop those off and put on some landing gear if you like. We have a carbon fiber blade and metal gear servos. And then let's take a look under here again, because we've got our receiver mounted here on the side, at least the satellite receiver, which is really nice. We just pressed the button and bound it to the transmitter. Now, unlike the Blade Infusion 120, where I struggled to bind it up, I got this just right. And then I reached out to Ethan Ader, the most amazing guy in the world, and I said, Ethan, I don't want to do anything wrong on this. Can you help me make sure I did it right? And we kind of went through everything, and turns out, I did it right. I think. <laughs> so today's going to be a maiden flight of this really cool, different looking Blade helicopter. Again, we're flying on a 3S, 2200 milliamp battery. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. And the longer I talk, the more wind picks up. So let's fly. Yeah, I got throttle hold to work. I can't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah, it's what flight moves. Okay, that's what flight moves. That's great. After a little bit of pre flight testing, like making sure my throttle hold works and safe is on a switch, which it is, if I threw this up into different flight mode, then I automatically spool up. I feel pretty good about the maiden flight here. Now I have a little bit of wind, so I have to be cautious of that. This being a maiden flight of a big helicopter. Listen to that, oh my goodness. Let's spool up some. Sounding good, nice and balanced. You know what? Rookie mistake. That looks cool the way it's sitting, but guess what? Orientation. It's pointed at us, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I was sitting here, my shoulders were getting tense. I get so nervous. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. Throw hold was on when I moved that sucker. <laughs> this is a big helicopter, so we gotta be a little bit careful. Yes. Let's listen to that spool up again. Nice. Okay. This is good. This is good. Uh, I want to take my own advice and not hover too close to the ground because that's where we have the ground effect. Prop wash. So we don't really want to fight that. We want to hover a little higher where we can be away from that prop wash. And I want to take things slowly. This is a maiden flight of a big powerful helicopter. I want to make sure things are working the way they should. And generally speaking, if you're new to anything, helicopters or heli uh, airplanes, your maiden flight shouldn't be too exciting unless you're really good. So. You know, we just want to make sure things are working the way they should. Am I rotating the proper way when I push that yaw? Yes, I was. When I pull back, it's coming back. Is it snapping back to level because I'm supposed to be in the safe? And it is. When I push right, does it go to the right and feel good? When I push left, the same deal. Once I got that down, I can now rely on a little bit of muscle memory and a little bit of skill, and we can just kind of putz it around and get some orientation going, and that's what I'm doing. All of which is very challenging to do while talking to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Nate yeah. struggling to talk? What? Well, with something in the air, yeah. This is good though. This is this is feeling really nice. It sounds good. All right, Nate, will it snap? You just hush. <laughs> like, you just hush. <laughs> so today's maiden, at least this flight, 
I don't anticipate doing anything crazy, but we'll see. We'll see. I tend to fall in a comfort zone pretty quickly and then want to push myself out of that pretty quickly. There's our y'all right. This is all there. It picked up speed. Look at that. Once I got it going, that's pretty cool. So it started off slow because I actually have expo in this Abby. <clears throat> Sounds good. I think it would look good with the landing gear on the wheels but it also makes it look like it has retracts right now with them not on so it looks great in the air but if you're flying close to the ground then those wheels will look pretty cool on it and i think that's really cool it comes with them i brought them up here i can show you at the end of this flight i can see the lights they look really nice i am not a very good helicopter pilot and i really want to be better i'm trying to baby myself and just take things slowly and carefully with this new helicopter because it looks cool i like it is this the biggest size blade of helicopter you've ever made, flown made blade yes it's a good size helicopter isn't it yeah so i've never flown a helicopter with expo in it either so that's new to me i followed the instructions step by step verbatim to get everything set up properly and it worked really well if i recall the infusion 120 did not have those type of instructions and that's why i struggled now ethan made a tutorial video after i said hey buddy i need some help here he probably realized you know nate needs it there's got to be at least one other person out there that needs it too so he made a video to help out this one i think he's going to have a video on too which is great uh, we kind of briefly talked about that, <clears throat> so look out for it. But also the instructions seem to have done a good job getting me in the air. I'm flying on an NX radio, it's the newest NX7E. And uh, a lot of people kind of hate the fact that it's white, so it's gonna get dirty. Other than that, it's a good radio because it's a budget radio. And it has been my primary radio for, well, since it came out, I've just prioritized using it because I wanna, I wanna test it for you guys, let you know how it holds up. So let's, let's just get a little more speed going. And what we might do, if this still goes well, I might put a fresh battery in and try like one loop or something. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. But for the first pack, we're just keeping it nice and scale, which I know a lot of people that fly that way. Nice and scale, and there's nothing wrong with that. It feels good, it's looking good. It's fun to zip down the runway. Nice little helicopter, Abby. Mm -hmm. I'm liking this with safe on. Safe is assigned to switch B. I have flight modes on switch F. I have throttle hold on switch H. I'm doing it like a real baby helicopter pilot here. Not bad at all. This is a good, fun, this is a fun experience. It truly is. But the equivalency to what I would say some guys would be flying um, just in their patterns, right? The guys that fly in a circle or maybe even a figure eight, that's kind of what we got going on here. Now I'll tell you what, I was, I've only flown in a circle, Let's, we can do some figure eight patterns and that's always good and healthy practice. So there we've got, got our left hand and there's our right hand and I feel good with that. Figure eights are, are good practice on a helicopter. You get a little left going and get right into some right hand banking and flying. It's really good muscle memory. It's good to react that way. And you can mix it up too. We can go the opposite direction. <clears throat> so I think what we hit was a five minute timer, I believe. This, from what I understand, has telemetry. So we should actually get a low voltage alarm. And since we're just maidening this, I kind of want to keep flying at about this altitude and see if we can't get that low voltage alarm with you guys, because I think that's really important for people to know the flight time. They say this can fly on a 2200 milliamp up to a 3200 milliamp battery i have 2200 in today which is my most common 3s battery and i do own a 3200 which i was charging before we got up here but it only got a 75 percent charge so today i'm just i just have my 2200s what do you think of this helicopter abby now that i kind of got it looks really cool i don't know what people are going to think of the foam and I wonder if that will actually even make it more durable because usually what happens with helicopters when they crash is just the motor gets obliterated and plus the blade. But I think it looks cool. What do you think of the foam? Okay, I, wasn't I just, ready for well, that. Well, sorry, I actually told you I was going to do that because I was out of kind of character there. But I, I throttle punched it just to see how it felt. 
Uh, yeah, I actually like it. I, I like that it adds a scale look to it. It's a futuristic scale look, but it gives more body to the helicopter. I've never been a massive fan. <clears throat> that was just me, by the way. I've never been a massive fan of the ugly <clears throat> traditional 3D stick helicopter, yeah, like, like the Infusion. Sure. I just right. don't love the way it looks because I feel like they all look the same. They're just an ugly little stick frame with a lightweight canopy on there. I get it. I know why they do that. That's to reduce the weight, get it as light as possible so you have more 3D capabilities. But for me, I've always appreciated these really cool like Huey uh, scale looking helicopters, World War II and uh, even Apaches and so anything that looks realistic in scale. I, I tend to prefer in the helicopter world, uh, and it's funny because I say in the airplane world, I like things that are extreme and you know, put the flames on it and the, the stars and stripes and stuff. So I'm actually very impressed with this flight time. I was not expecting this. I was thinking four minutes and that'd be it. There's full throttle with not full pitch. If I was full pitch up, then we would have gone down. So here's what happens in safe if I full throttle and full pitch forward you see we go down. So if you give both sticks all the way up, you will actually lose altitude. Here we go, full throttle and full pitch forward. You really go down pretty steep. So if what, what you wanna do if you wanna get your full speed down the runway is full throttle and like half or a third of your right stick. This also has the ability to have panic mode um, set up. It's a button up at the top, it's your bind button. You can assign that to a switch, which I did. And theoretically, if I'm out of safe and I panic and I can't get my finger on the safe switch fast enough, I could hit that button and it would recover the helicopter for me. You know, you gotta be a good mistake high or so, but I'm really impressed with this flight time and I hope you guys are just enjoying, kind of chilling with us, hanging out, pushing the flight time to its limit. Just a fresh battery right off the charger. It is very cold out this morning in the 40s, so, <clears throat> You know, we're not going to get peak performance out of this battery. I keep thinking we're going to just start sinking out of the sky, but look at this flight time. This is a really good maiden flight. It's increasing my confidence and my comfort with this helicopter, which is really what I need. Time. Time and moving the sticks. There, listen to that. Did you hear that? I heard it. We got telemetry. That's great. Let's try to have a decently smooth landing if possible. The wind is picked up. Don't want it coming toward us, so let's just do it like this. Okay, we'll take that. We'll take that. That was a good little landing. What was that flight time? That was almost 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Huh. You always have to film the entire oh, spool down. <laughs> now, gosh, I hope I do this right. Okay, we're gonna keep it in safe. What I did there, guys, I don't know if you saw, but the battery strap, I think it's wise to strap all the cords down, even the balance lead, if you've got balance lead on your battery, so it doesn't get up in the motor. So really, take advantage of the two straps that are in there. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is fly up, a couple of mistakes high, it's gonna not be great for filming or anything. Keep my hand on the safe switch, like, Push it out some too. Yeah, okay. Please. Okay. And then Thanks. I'm just going to kick it in the middle flight mode and see if it'll let me roll. We'll do a sideways roll. So, middle flight mode. Roll it over. Yeah, and then back on safe. Hey, hey. Okay, that felt fine. So, what I'm going to do, and that's not the best way, okay? 3D pilots cringing. Uh oh, oh. no. Abby, okay, it's fine, it's fine. I'm in safe. My don't camera know. went blurry right when that it's happened. Okay. <laughs> I don't know exactly what happened, but the helicopter twisted around quickly. And I think it was wind pushing it, but I'm not totally positive. So I definitely just want to take a quick look at it because that was not me. That twist around was not me. Sorry about the blurry. I forgot it was on auto. <laughs> Maybe it was nervous thumbs. I don't know, but I just felt good just checking it out. Everything seems to be okay. We're gonna try that again. Maybe a tiny bit lower this time. We're still unsafe. <clears throat> okay. And we'll just, it's, we're getting some gusts of wind now, so not necessarily the best way to, to uh, push yourself, but 
I feel okay right here. So we're going to go out some, but we're a little lower this time. And I want to try that roll again. We're just going to keep it in my comfort zone. We're going to do a right hand. Here we go. Safe off. Roll it over. Leaving it out of safe. I'm not messing with safe yet. Okay. And I feel a little wonky, so we're going to put it in safe. Get it lower before I get out of sight or anything. Then get a little lower. I don't feel like I'm dropping too much altitude on that, so we're going to do that about right here. I'm going to do a right roll again. Safe off, let it spool up some. Uh, and safe back on. Never, ever commit to the landing when you don't feel comfortable. You can always go around. Don't commit to the loop unless you feel comfortable. Make sure everything is within your comfort zone. Okay, we're going to go safe off, roll it over, and safe on. Now, the helicopter goes through some things when it's doing that. You don't want it to all be instant because the way it flies in safe and the way it flies out of safe is very different. So listen to this. When I'm down here lower, and I feel comfortable doing this, this is fine. I'm not going to do a roll here. I'm not doing a roll here. But I am going to take it out of safe. It's fairly close to us, so you guys can just listen to what the helicopter does. I'm going to throw safe now. And back in safe. Hear the difference in the Wait, pitch is this the, out of safe or in this safe? This is in safe. Okay. So now listen to what it does in out of safe. <laughs> Three, two, one, listen. And back in safe. You hear the difference in the pitch? Could you hear that, Abby? Oh yeah. Okay. It sounds more powerful out of safe. It does, yeah. So also this helicopter can fly inverted and do crazy things, but I can't do that. But what we are going to do is a front loop and then we'll get back in safe and land it. Because I want to keep this helicopter in one piece, but I also want to push myself a little bit. So we're going to fly out for safety's sake. We're going to rotate the helicopter to my left. We're going to throw it out of safe and do a front loop. And in safe and just recover. Oh, That's what we do. That's what we Good do. Job. Well, because that was so much fun, let's do a backflip. <laughs> Thank you. And then we're going to bring it home. Okay? Yep. So we're going out of safe, let it spool up, back, and in safe. <laughs> oh, that feels good. Okay? Now, that's not the best way to really push yourself, but it's the way I like to push myself. And I think that was a very successful maiden because I feel really good about my safe functionality working. I know that I can throw it out of safe and do some maneuvers. I know I can also kick it up into the more advanced flight mode and do 3D maneuvers. What that does, back here, when you bind it, switch B is safe. When it's in the zero position or all the way back, you're in safe. When we kick it out of that, we would actually throttle up by itself. Watch this stand back, Abby. Throttle hold is off. When safe is off, it wants to stay at a constant speed. And what adjusts your altitude at that point is the pitch of your props. They adjust. So the rotor stays at a speed and what adjusts your height and how it's cutting through the air is these rotate. And that affects your altitude and how it moves through the air. So <clears throat> when you're in safe, generally speaking, but not always, it's the RPM plus a little bit of the pitch of the prop that adjusts the altitude. You have no altitude hold or anything, but you do have auto level. And then when you're in the most advanced flight mode, what it tends to do, and I could be wrong, someone correct me if I am, but at 0% throttle, you're actually like full throttle in reverse. At 50% throttle on your stick, is its perfect happy hover mode. So you have to imagine the helicopter has from 50% to 100% is your true normal flying mode. And then if you want to fly inverted, which if I do this, it's gonna fight me here. But then from 50% from to 0% is now how you fly inverted. 
And it's a lot to wrap your head around because it's just a whole different concept of throttle management versus like most airplanes. Some airplanes have a similar flight mode, but very few. I'm thrilled. I think for me, that's one of the best maidens I could possibly ask for in a bind and fly helicopter. And this puppy will be linked in the description box below. I'm nothing special at all, especially behind the sticks of a helicopter. So if I can have success with this, I am 100% confident you can too. This was a really good helicopter experience for me. I like that it's something different. Some people won't. Some people will also appreciate like me that there's something different. It's not fun to see the same old thing all the time. So good on Blade and Horizon for doing that. Now it's vitally important, especially when you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone that you fly with something called AMA. It's the Academy of Model Aeronautics. It's an insurance program for those of us that fly RCs, drive RCs, anything between cars, trucks, boats even, helicopters, airplanes, drones, they cover it all. I highly recommend you fly with them because if I were to crash this and it flies through a window back there or a car or even an airplane that's parked up here, the AMA is gonna step in and they're gonna help cover those damages that I could have potentially done with the helicopter. And again, I was out of my comfort zone very much so, and so it makes me feel, I, I mean, I just, I wouldn't even consider flying without AMA. It's just a huge security blanket for me. I feel so much better knowing that I have it by my side. I'm doing everything that I should to fly by the rules and guidelines, but things happen. You saw that happen. It might've been a nervous thumb. That might've been a gust of wind, but man, that thing twisted around 180 degrees. I recovered just fine from it. It didn't bother me, but that was the only little one second moment where I thought maybe I'm not in control here. Don't really know what happened, but otherwise, what a great maiden this was. And again, this will be linked in the description box below. My entire setup, my batteries, the radio I'm flying on, and I have put this thing through the ropes. I think I have like 30 models on this now or somewhere around there. I've been flying on it nonstop, and it's proven to be a very good, especially budget-friendly radio. It's the newest NX radio by Spectrum. A lot of people don't even know this is a Spectrum radio. I've, I've not drawn a lot of attention to this, uh, but I've been flying my helicopters and airplanes on it and it's proven to be a great radio. So again, it'll be linked in the description box below. I love the lights on it, by the way. Batteries, everything I use to get this in the air, including the helicopter itself. I wanna say a massive thanks to God for blessing me with a good enough day to get this flight to you. We have had so much wind and bad weather lately. I was honestly worried about getting this recorded in time for the release of it. So a big thanks to God for blessing us with this moment to share with you guys. I'm so grateful. And on the subject of gratitude, I wanna say a massive thanks to our Patreon supporters because we couldn't do what we do as often as we do it without your insanely awesome support. If you wanna see another cool helicopter video, and we do have quite a few on our channel, we'll have a hand-picked video popping up right about now just for you. Thanks for watching. See you there. Bye.